Hey, what is going on guys? Vexo bring another Photoshop tutorial. So today I'm going to show you five easy steps to improve your thumbnails. Now I've been doing this because I've seen a lot of people ask me questions in my template videos so I thought I might just answer some of these and basically start a new series where I'll be showing you guys how to do stuff rather than just relying on my templates. So that's pretty it. Uh, please like the video if you enjoy or please even subscribe if you're new. That's always really appreciated and let's get on with it. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. This is a quick mock-up I've made of something you might see from someone who doesn't really know how to make a thumbnail. We've got the red text, we've got the stock image from Google, nothing's resized, you've still got logos and it's looking pretty bad. So the first step is to fix up your text. So what we're going to do is select it all and a lot of people do red or they sometimes do they do a bright yellow and it just doesn't look good. So whatever you do, never do bright colors like that for the text, uh, at least not in a simple thumbnail like this. So what we're going to do first step is we're going to make this white and then we're going to pick a nice font. So the default, uh, if you don't know what to use, it would be Babas New or Railway. They're just big, bold, uh, thick text that just work in pretty much any situation. So we're going to use Babas New for the moment. Now obviously that's looking you know a bit small so we'll go control T we can make that bigger and then if we double click on our layer we can either put a stroke on it which you never want to do red you want to have something like a black or we can do a drop shadow so you can copy my settings or just muck around with that a bit uh, to get your own right but as you can see when we add a drop shadow that just makes the text uh, clearly defined from the background it's separate it's visible and it's nice it's simple but uh, it's nice, still, and clear. So we've got our text sorted out. Now we need to do the background. So the first thing you want to do is to fix up the positioning. So that involves getting rid of the logo. So if we use the Band-Aid tool here and we click on our layer, we just click OK. And then with something simple like this, we can get rid of the logo just with the Band-Aid tool. And it does muck it up a bit, doesn't quite look right. But on a thumbnail, when we're viewing it, it's going to be like this small, it doesn't matter anyway. And then we want to get the text. Make sure your text is never covering any objects. So you want to resize this. And we'll maybe make it, because this is obviously the uh, theme of the video. We've got some Forza gameplay. And you want to move that up. And if, you, if you've ever got this problem, a quick tip. If you have your image, you want to move it like up higher, but if the background's missing, a quick and easy way when you've got a simple background like this is to get your eraser tool, put the hardness to zero, and put a feather along the bottom. And then from that feather, you can go Control J to duplicate your layer. And then you move the layer below it down just like that. And then it blends in really well. And it's just a way of extending. This all, it works really well with any sort of grass or roads or sky, especially. This works really well. And it's just a quick way to extend your image. So we've got our image placed. We've got a nice uh, bold text. We might better actually make this a bit bigger now. And then we want to make our image pop a bit more. We want to make it a bit vibrant. So what we're going to do is above our text, above our image layers, not our text layers, we're going to put, click on this uh, half-colored circle, and we're going to put brightness and contrast. Now the easiest way is just to click the auto button, and that'll automatically decide uh, how much brightness and contrast you need for your image. Remember, this doesn't always work too well, especially if you've got big blank areas like this sand and uh, the sky. So you can see this has made our brightness darker and our contrast darker, which for a YouTube thumbnail we don't want. This does look more natural and it is technically more accurate, but it's not what we want for a thumbnail. So you always want to turn your brightness up a bit, uh, as YouTube tends to make them a bit darker when you upload them, and you want to maybe turn up your contrast a bit. So you can just get that right. It's obviously going to be different depending on what any image you have, so I really can't tell you uh, one key way to do it. And then we do this again, and this time we're going to select hue and saturation, and you want to add a bit of saturation. Now, don't do this too much. Obviously, if it looks like this, it's going to be terrible, and a lot of people's thumbnails honestly do look like this. Well, the opposite end of the spectrum is if they already look like this, the image you've got, then you want to decrease it and make it duller. So if we just add a little bit here, that looks good. And then what we're going to do is we can delete these layers, and we can see the difference. So obviously this makes it a lot brighter, a lot more colorful, and just basically a lot more attractive for somebody to click on. Okay, so now you've got your thumbnail, it looks pretty good, but it looks a bit generic. You want to make it stand out, you want to make it your own. There's two ways to do this. The first way is to add a border. So what we're going to do, if we merge these two down, and then what we're going to do is get your selection tool, 
select the whole area, go control C and then control V. And then that just makes sure that our layer is exactly the size of the document and it doesn't go over the borders. So once we've done that, we can go control T and we can make this a little bit smaller holding shift and alt to keep the ratios equal. And then if we create a new layer beneath that and we get the bucket tool, we can pick a color. So whatever the theme color of your channel for me, that's a blue. So we'll just get a light blue here. And then what we can do, we've added that blue and what you're gonna do, if you do this to all of your thumbnails or a lot of them, it'll just make a theme for your thumbnails so you, you can identify them as yours. And you know, people identify your channel as soon as they see it. And it's really simple, but it doesn't take any extra time. Now, if you wanna add your logo to go that bit step further, what you wanna do is make this layer beneath white. So we can double click on it, color overlay, and make it white. And then what you're gonna do is grab your pen tool. So with the pen tool, we can click somewhere on the corner we click and then we go down to an opposite corner somewhere even and then we hold and we drag what we can do is select a corner out just like that a nice curve and then what we'll do is we go all the way around the edge we right click in there and we click make selection and then we click ok and then that's obviously inverse when you go select inverse and then within this layer within that selection rather we need to create a new layer and then we get to get our brush tool or a bucket tool and then we want to drop that white in again. Now you can go control D to deselect that and as you can see there is a curve out of our thumbnail. So again this just identifies it as yours, makes it a bit different. And when you've got a huge list of subscriptions on the suggested videos or you've got on the YouTube homepage, this will just make sure that it stands out. Uh, so we've got that and now what you can do in that area is you can grab your logo. So if I just quickly do that. and make sure you've got a transparent background on this logo and then you double click on it just to make sure that the color is all the same so we'll make this well, I'll probably do a black just like nice and simple and then what you can do is you can put your logo in the bottom right hand corner and then that'll just make sure that everyone knows it, it's your video you, you know you've made it and your fans if they see it on the home page they can identify it as yours and it's just a really easy way to make basically brand your thumbnails and make sure that they are easily recognizable by pretty much anyone. So as you can see now, this compared to what we originally had just looks so much better. It doesn't take much time at all, only a few minutes and just a really easy way to, some really easy steps to improve your thumbnails. So hopefully this video helped you guys. Maybe if it did, please have a like or comment down below letting me know. It's always really appreciated. It's nice to know you guys are enjoying my videos. Uh, please leave me any suggestions for future videos you want to see. Anything like this, anything completely different. All your suggestions, I read all of them, even if I don't get back to you. Any questions you have, I'll try to answer. And if you see someone else with a question, please answer their questions. Uh, all of that kind of stuff, as the usual. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>